In this video, we're going to look at the step response of a low-pass filter. The low-pass filter is the most basic uh, system you can have, and a system is any anything that acts upon a signal. So you probably learned in your circuits course uh, what an RC filter does. It's a low-pass filter. In this video, we're going to think about this from a, a signals and systems perspective. Generally speaking, the easiest way to analyze, or at least the most straightforward way to analyze any circuit is to write its differential equation. In this case, we equate the current through the resistor to the current through the capacitor. The current through the resistor is V in minus V out over R, and the current through the capacitor is I equals C dV out dt. So we set those two currents equal. And right off the bat, we can notice some pretty useful stuff um, let's say for the sake of argument that our uh, input voltage is a step input, which is a pretty standard input. There's, uh, there's some sort of fairly common problems that we like to solve because they're uh, instructive and useful. And in this case, we'll be looking at the step input. So if we assume that the capacitor starts out with uh, zero volts, that means at t equals zero, the input has one volt and the output uh, we're initializing that capacitor to have zero volts. So the voltage drop across that resistor is one volt. So therefore there's one volt uh, divided by the resistor. That's how much current we have to charge the capacitor. And remember the capacitor, the more current you put into it, the faster it charges up. So in the beginning, that capacitor which starts out empty is going to charge up fairly quickly. Now, as time goes on, that capacitor will charge up, and you can imagine now, let's put some other voltage on that capacitor. Let's say it charges to two-tenths of a volt. Now the voltage drop across the resistor is less. Now there's only eight-tenths of, eight of a volt drop across the resistor, which means there's going to be less current. And if there's less current, the capacitor will still charge, but it will charge less fast. And so that capacitor is going to continue to charge, but it's going to charge less and less fast as a function of time. And in doing so, it will asymptotically approach the, the charge value, the input value of one volt. Right? In the end, when your output voltage is close to a volt, there will be very little current trickling through that resistor, which means that capacitor will basically not charge anymore. Okay, So essentially, there will uh, be an asymptote. Um, so the equation for this, uh, this RC charging, as you probably should have learned in your circuits course, is that the output voltage as a function of time is equal to 1 minus e to the minus t over RC. And this specific case only applies for an initial value of 0. Okay, So this uh, assumes this assumes that the capacitor voltage uh, V out at T equals zero uh, equals zero. You can resolve that differential equation for other input for other initial values, but in this case we'll just assume the standard case. Good. So uh, first thing to notice is that uh, gen we should talk about the timing, how long it takes to charge. Uh, generally speaking, we count in terms of time constants. So a time constant is equal to R times C, which always has the units of seconds. And generally speaking, if we wait until uh, T equals five time constants, five tau, then this capacitor will have basically charged up all the way. Keep in mind that it's never truly going to get to one volt because it's going to charge asymptotically, but after five time constants, we're going to get pretty darn near all the way there. And the way you can tell is you should substitute five RC into the equation above. So V out at T equals five time constants is going to equal one minus E to the minus five RC over RC. So one minus E to the minus five. I'm going to get out my calculator and I'm going to determine that one minus E to the minus five is 0.99. So we'll have charged basically all the way by about five time constants. So that's all well and good. Now let's think about this from a uh, signals perspective. So what I want you to think about 
is I want you to start by thinking about your input signal. Let's just label this. So the the um, the red signal is the input signal, which I've chosen to be a step. And what I'd like you to notice is that it contains both low and high frequencies. So over here, where it's flat, we can say that the input voltage has uh, low frequencies. Okay, so those low frequencies are all here in this flat part. However, it also contains some high frequencies. If you look at this uh, this discontinuity, this vertical step, that, as we've learned, is a high frequency event. Now, compare the input to the output. If we look at the output voltage, something very interesting happens. We still have low frequency in our in our output signal. Okay, so our output signal still passes, uh, still contains lots of low frequencies, but what it's missing is the high frequency edge. Okay, so if you look here, that high frequency edge is gone. So high F is gone. Okay, and it's replaced with a much, instead of a very fast, sharp uh, rise, it's replaced with a slow, smooth increase. So essentially what we've done is we've built a circuit that passes low frequencies and it rejects high frequencies. And that is a low pass filter. So one way to express this uh, graphically is to draw the filter response, and this is a not particularly mathematically accurate way of doing it, but it'll do for today. So we're going to call this the filter response, and uh, essentially what this is is the gain of the filter. So what we're going to assume is that at low frequencies, uh, the the system passes all the frequencies, so a gain of one means that uh, the output equals the input, and then at high frequencies, sorry, let's see if we can do that a little straighter. At high frequencies, the um, the gain starts to tail off, and you head towards a gain of zero. Okay, so this is your sort of standard low pass filter. Uh, response, at least in cartoon format. Now, let's consider one alternative. Let's consider a, a different low-pass filter. Let's take our low-pass filter and just change the values for the resistor and the capacitor. And in doing so, let's assume that our step response now looks like that. Okay, so what I've done is I've given you a new low-pass filter and it has its own value of tau. So we have the blue tau and we have the green tau. Both of them are low pass filters. Both of them have step response, one minus e to the minus t over rc. The only difference is there is their time constants. Now I would argue that if it takes five time constants for the signal to charge up all the way, and if the blue signal charges up faster, that would imply that its time constant is smaller. But what about its cutoff frequency? If we look at our filter response, we can see that the uh, one way we can describe our filter is to talk about it having a cutoff frequency, which is the frequency at which uh, it transitions from passing low frequencies to rejecting high frequencies. Now I look at the blue filter and I say, look, it's still a low pass filter, but it is passing more high frequencies than the green filter because the blue filter charges faster, that implies that it is passing more high frequencies in order to charge faster. So if we were to look at the frequency response of the blue filter, what we might expect is something that's still a low pass filter, okay, it's still passing low frequencies and rejecting high frequencies, but it has a higher cutoff frequency. Okay, it has a cutoff frequency that allows it to pass more high frequencies. So this is pretty interesting. We've taken a low pass filter, we've looked at its step response, 
uh, which came as a result of analyzing the differential equation. And then just by thinking about it analytically, we've been able to make some signal style analysis to infer that this is a low-pass filter and to infer how the value of the time constant, RC, affects the cutoff frequency of the filter.